part two. Now the metal frames are complete, I can move on to the fiberglassing and the soft parts. So, let's dive in. When I made my first pair of stilts, I had to mold my feet to make the foot shells. Let's call them that. My feet in the stilts are pretty much in a high heel position. This gives maximum height to the stilt, but most importantly, it gives minimal leg depth. The main problem these stilts were designed to solve. Every, normal sets of stilts, you have kind of thin leg, thin leg, thin leg, and then at the bottom, bam, tree trunk leg, and everyone around you knows that's exactly where your feet are. I've had many people walk up to me when I'm dressed as Chewy, and, and they genuinely ask, am I that tall? Because they can't, they can't quite figure it out. I don't have any footage of when I originally cast my feet, because that was years ago. The way I did it back then, I got, I got all organised, I wore the, the same socks I was going to wear with the stilts eventually. I, I cling filmed my feet, held my toes back in a kind of as best a high heel position as I could replicate without wearing them, and then very thinly fibreglassed my feet. Fibreglass, as I'm sure you know, gets hot when it cures, so I only did a very, very thin layer of fibreglass. I did it on one of the warmest days of that year, so hopefully the fibreglass would cure as quickly as possible. But still, I definitely got some cramp in my feet from holding my toe like that for so long. It did work though. That's how I did it back in the day. Today, I already have a pair of stilts, so I don't need to do any of that faffing around. All I have to do is copy them. I cling filmed the existing feet shells I already had, I warmed up some clay and oh you know you've seen me do this a few times by now. Once nice and cold take the clay feet out and you have a great base to cast some new stilt parts from. Same goes for the rest of the fiberglass sections. I made new clay shapes from the pieces I previously made to make new ones. Feet, calf and shin. Oh, I really don't like fibreglassing, but onto the fibreglassing. I've talked you through this process many times by now, so same as always, I buy my materials from cfsnet.co.uk, link down below, wear disposable gloves and a face mask, and try not to make a mess. I like to cut out five large sheets of fiberglass that will form the base for my stilts. Sit the frame on top of that and whilst it's still curing, that's the important bit, fiberglass all around and over the steel to encase it in one piece. I made the mistake on, oh, what was it, probably Mark II, where I fiberglass the floor let that cure and then did the rest later. And honestly, in time it did separate, so doing it as one piece is a great tip. It's a vital tip, really. I spent, as I'm sure you will, age, far to, ages far too long trying to make it neat. Let me save you the trouble. You can't do it. It doesn't work. You just can't. You just, you just have to make it look as good as you can. No one's ever going to see it. I keep having to remind myself of this. No one's ever going to see it. But it, it does annoy me that I can't make it look better than it does. It probably looks fine on camera. It's just in person, you know. I thought I'd do a video like this rather than force you to watch another video of me endlessly fiberglassing. I need another shin. I need another calf. Come on, phone. There we go. This clay structure here and here fiberglass in there like that so the foot will lock down on the steel like that and this here piece of fiberglass over there so velcro can slot through on each foot i made three loops for the velcro something just fell past camera then and one loop for the steel 
it gets a bit it gets a bit fiddly here but it all makes sense in the end Demold. As I covered all my clay pieces in cling film at the start, they should really just pop out. I did have a bit of trouble freeing the feet actually. Sagging fiberglass as it cured did kind of mean the angle grinder had to lend a helping hand. Next, still using the angle grinder, trim off all the edges and all the excess fiberglass you don't need. Then, onto the belt sander. Smooth off and round off all the edges and all the corners. Soft parts. I didn't want to show you my tragic use of the sewing machine on video, so I just kind of got on with the soft parts in the evenings watching TV last week. I'm not very good at using the sewing machine, but I get by. I've made two one inch thick foam squares. I bought the foam at Dunelm. I think it cost me four pounds in total, so not much. Covered it in, I, I believe this is a uh, blackout material. I wanted something that wouldn't fray at the edges. I also needed to make two one meter long kind of double thickness velcro lengths sewn front and back so when it curls back round on itself it will velcro to itself another two two meter long but this time single velcro lengths again sewn front and back for the toe sections all i've done is covered some bog standard bog standard string in duct tape. I find if you don't have the duct tape reinforcement the string just snaps at the most annoying times. And of course I didn't make them but some nice thick socks. Here is all of our bits to build. It's quite a lot of pieces isn't it to build one still. Let's take you through it. Our u-shaped piece of metal. Let's get it the right way round. <laughs> That sits in here. There we go. Like that. Let's tilt the camera up so you can see it better. There we go. Nut and a bolt. Here's our piece of rubber that's a car mat. Same rubber that's on the battery. I can show you that. On the base, I've glued with Araldite a nice piece of car mat for grip. They work really well. So, the whole point of this, it doesn't actually do anything for the stilt, but when your foot is here and your toe is pushing on here, I mean, A, it keeps your toe down like this rather than sticking out like it naturally wants to do so it helps with the silhouette but also from experience I found that your toe wants to kind of feel like it's helping you walk so it's pushing on here it makes you feel more balanced and more stable in the stilt it's kind of strange but it, it, it's true that's that I've got my string covered in duct tape which and when you come to put the stilt on, almost always that's down there like that and you can't reach. So that helps you pull it up and get your toe in and then you just tie it off up there. Foot shell, I forgot what it was called then. That sits, let me show you better. This shape there sits, get my arm out of the way, sits on there like that. We then have our two brackets, one with a, yeah, a B on it and one with an F on it, so I know which, you know, which is front and back. Getting there now, getting there. So I normally tie that, tie that around here. We have our shin piece with our piece of padding. 
Velcro. That slots. That slots through there at the back. Obviously when you're wearing it, that's tightly fastened up. And then you have your other piece of Velcro that goes around your foot, but I obviously can't put that on now. There we have, get my head out of the way. There we have one stilt. If you want to see me putting on a pair of these stilts, my chewy ones, please go and watch my getting kitted up video. If I can do it right, it should be there. As for this pair, as you wear them, you'll need to adjust them for kind of for fit and for comfort. Nothing beats real world use. And that's, that's pretty much it. My custom stilts.